welcome to the Gilded Bubble. My name is Carrie, and today I've got for you a soap that I'm calling Peachy Keen. It's a layered soap with a really fresh peach scent, and I think you're gonna love it. So let's get soaping. My license is ready to go into my oils. I have also added some salt water to this because I'm too cheap to buy sodium lactate, why would you? Salt's like 88 cents for a big container of it, and sodium lactate's like $20 for 16 ounces, so I'm cheap, um, and it works just as well. So I'm going to add my lye water to this, and then hopefully I'm gonna figure out how the hell I'm gonna color this, but I am using Brazen Hussy by Mad Micah's. soaping at about 110 degrees, give or take a couple here. I just took my measurements right before I switched the camera on. soap here and I want to make sure that my layers set up. I'm not, I don't really like waiting for layers to set up because the rest of your batch sets up. I don't like to make this in separate batches. I don't know. Maybe I'm being lazy. Maybe when I start doing this on a larger scale, I'll deal with that. But I think that looks good. It's not separating on me. So I'm going to go ahead and take my stick blender out. And I'm gonna put my color in. So what I think I'm gonna do is gradually lighten this with titanium dioxide as I go. Right now I've got my brazen hussy here diluted, well diluted, dispersed in just some of my base oils here. Um, and I'm gonna see how this goes. What I was thinking I would do is just kind of um, put all of this in and then gradually lighten it with the TD for each layer. I don't know. I'm not going for like really an ombre, just a tonal looking layered thing. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but we're just going to go ahead and put that in there. And I'm going to reuse this pitcher to actually put my batter in. So I'm not going to worry too much if I get all this out or not. I just want to get started with it and see how that goes. I love this color. This color is literally one of my favorites. I bought like a little quarter ounce of it and I think I'm just going to bite the bullet and buy the big one, but it's so pretty. It's so bright. It's a little hard to disperse, but because it's a neon, but I love it. I absolutely adore it. Um, and what I think I'm gonna do, I'm trying to, I'm doing a peach scent. I'm using Southern Peach by Brambleberry. And um, I don't know if I got that in the frame. Let's try that again. And um, I don't know, I'm going for more of a peach look, so I don't know how much titanium dioxide I want in my darkest layer. So we're gonna go with that and see how that works. I don't know, we're gonna, we're gonna just see. So what I'm gonna do is put a little TD in here just to lighten it up. I don't want this insanely bright peach color, but I also wanna be able to make it lighter as I go. So I'm just gonna put in about a quarter of a teaspoon and see what that does for me. It may not do very much, so that might be all right. I'm not gonna play with it too much. I've pre-dispersed my TD in some water and uh, yeah, it didn't really do much, but it might as I mix it a little more once I put the scent in. So I'm not gonna worry about that too, too much. What I'm gonna do is weigh this out so that I know how much, I wanna do four layers. So I'm gonna weigh this out so I can divide it by four and put it in a smaller pitcher so it's easier to pour. <clears throat> it should be about 50 ounces. All right, so I'm looking at about 12 ounces of batter per layer. That's pretty easy to do. I'm gonna go ahead and get I love these Brambleberry molds. They're so easy to unmold and I don't ever have any real issue with it, especially once I use that salt water in place of my sodium lactate. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some of my batter into this. I need about 12 ounces of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and weigh that out. All right, so there's what I've got for my first batch. I'm actually using a sample size of this fragrance. So it's not gonna be super, super strong. And I think that's probably okay. I'm not. You know, again, I'm just experimenting with this, but 
wow, that fragrance is so good. It smells really just like a fresh peach. It's a little candy scented, but not terribly so. Some of, some of the fruit scents can just smell straight up like sugar. And I don't know, I like my scents to be a little more natural. And I've not used this one before. Brambleberry says it behaves well. So I don't know if it's gonna keep my trace at a normal pace or if I'm going to, it's gonna slow it down. I had a fragrance I was trying to do layers with and so it behaves well in cold process. I'm like, okay, cool, it'll set up about normal. And that scent, I think it was the peach Prosecco, slowed down my batter so much. I was sitting here for hours and I finally just gave up and was like, screw this, and just kept going. And actually the soap turned out fine. So I'm gonna speed this up just a little bit because I am doing layers. I don't wanna go too much. I might go to just a light trace. Just get into trace there. I'll do a little bit more blend. That looks pretty good. I'm not gonna sweat that too much. It's kind of just getting to a, a light trace on me. We'll see. My other layers are gonna set up faster once I put that TD in them, so. I don't know. I mean, that could be a peach color. We're just gonna play with it. I don't care. It's not as bright red as Brazen Hussy is on its own, so. We're just gonna go with that and pour it straight into the mold. This first layer is my favorite because it's so easy. <laughs> so I've only been soaping, gosh, I think I picked this up in like August and I quickly became obsessed. I've since started my own business. Um, I just, I can't quite get enough of it. And um, you know, I'm very passionate about the craft, but I also was really looking for something that I could kind of do to bring in money that wasn't going to be soul draining, you know? So I just, I don't know. I just wanted to have something going on in my life that brought me joy. And I love soap making. I love watching soap making videos. So I decided to go ahead and do my own thing here. Um, I don't know. I mean, I love watching. I hate when I see a soap video or someone showing the pour and then they never get to the cut. So I will show you the cut on this one. Um, but you know, I just, <laughs> I really enjoy it. I enjoy every aspect of it. I like doing the business side of it. I've only sold to some friends and family so far, but that's okay. I mean, I really was selling some of my, my practice batches and some of my, um, just initial test runs until I got my recipe down. I started off using, um, I actually started with, um, the Royal Creative Academy series that uh, Katie does on royalty soaps. And, and I'm probably I'm practically old enough to be her mother, but I just find her so inspiring that she's been doing this. She's been making soap since she was a teenager. And I love that she shared her process and her recipe. And I've, you know, I started off with that, uh, that recipe that she shares in that series and I'll, I'll link it for you. But if I just absolutely just had such a blast doing that. And I thought, I've been watching her videos for a couple months and I thought, you know, I feel like I could do this. I feel like it's something that I would really enjoy and that I would get a lot of um, pleasure out of. I'm a creative person, but I also love science. I love to bake. And I thought this reminds me of baking, but it's a lot more scientific and the creative aspect of it is not as complex. So baking for me, I love the science of it. I love the act of actually just baking things and giving them to friends and family. But my issue always comes in with decorating. I lose my patience. And I feel like, unless you're really trying to do something intricate with um, with your soap, you know, you're getting essentially um, the opportunity to be creative while not really worrying so much about the final product because by the time you've poured it, and, and you know, you compare that to like baking a cake. Once I've poured and baked that cake, now I've still got to decorate it. But with soap, by the time you pour it, it's already doing what it's supposed to do. And all I have to do is wait. Now that's a hard part. I remember when I did that first batch of soap from, from Katie's uh, tutorial, it took me, I had to wait three days to unmold the thing. And I, <laughs> I was so impatient. Um, but the thing about soap is like once you unmold it or once you pour it into the mold and then unmold it, you're done. Like there's not a whole lot except for a little bit of cleanup. And, um, you know, you don't really have to uh, wait around for the, you know, a cake to cool and then decorate it and hope you don't screw that up because then you'd have to start all over. Like a batch of soap's a batch of soap. If it screws up, it screws up. You can do another one, but you don't have to continue to work on it after it's done.
I am gonna take this to a light trace also. It looks like I'm starting to set up down there, so that's gonna be good. Um, I've mixed my fragrance oil in here, and I don't know if I had that in the right part of the frame earlier. Still learning this, I can't believe. I got, I teach college, and I teach in a journalism and communication department, so I have all these students that know how to do video, and why I didn't ask one of them to help me, I don't know, but here we go. Maybe I will, maybe when I have the money to pay them. I believe in paying people for their work, so we'll see. But, you know, like I said, I'm a creative person. I've, you know, published novels. I've been a fan fiction writer. Um, I tried painting when I was younger. I wasn't really great at it. But I've always been so creative and so looking for that creative outlet. And, man, did soap making do it for me. It's, like, meditative. And it's, I don't know, there's just something about it that just really makes me happy. And, uh, you know, I can't be too mad about that. So, so yeah, you can see that layer is just a little bit lighter than my other one. I'm gonna do another layer here. I'm gonna measure this out, get about 12 ounces of my batter here. I'm working with about a 50 ounce batch. Oops, a little bit more on that one. That's okay though. Just take a little out. All right, Oop, I need that spatula. I don't know, I talk to myself while I make soap too, so I figured I might as well talk to a camera and see if I can spread the love on that one. So I'm gonna add a little more TD to this, get it a little bit lighter, hope I don't go too light. No, that's gonna be fine. Um, get it a little lighter than my last layer and see where we go from there. Nope, it's gonna need a little more. I might actually have to mix up more TD. We'll see how this goes. Oh, I got something floating in my soap, don't want that. There we go. Yeah, I'm gonna have to mix up more TD. I didn't think about that. Uh, we'll see. Hopefully I don't get too many glycerin rivers. Although I don't mind glycerin rivers. I know a lot of people don't like them. And I can understand, too, if the design you're doing is really intricate. You don't necessarily want that. i got to go a little lighter. Um, but honestly, I think most of the time they just end up looking really, really cool. I might throw a picture in here of a soap I did that has um, some really heavy glycerin rivers and just the white part. And I just thought it turned out so cool looking. Like, how are you going to get mad about that? Yeah, I'm gonna need a little more TD. My glasses are fogging up, so it's hard for me to see. But I think I wanna go just, I'm definitely gonna need more for my next layer, so. Actually, that might be okay. Yeah, I need to uh, throw a drop in here and see how much lighter it is than that last layer. Let's look. Oh yeah, that's quite a bit lighter. That's gonna work just fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw my uh, fragrance in there. Let me make sure this is pretty even. It looks a little uneven there. And I've got to put another quarter of this bottle. I'm getting TD everywhere. Somebody wants to teach me how to be a cleaner soaper. I sometimes have my mom help me. And what I really love about that is she'll do, she'll do all the cleaning while I'm still working on the soap. And so by the time I get done um, with my soap, you know, my dishes are almost complete. I usually do a double wash on them because I don't really have a place to store them. Otherwise, I just let them sit overnight. Let the soap harden up. Let it get... Um, you know, to where it's uh, soap and it can kind of clean itself. But to tell you the truth, I just don't have the space to do that. And I have pets and I just don't want that sitting around my house. But one day, that's my plan. I have a place where I can leave my soap sit and uh, just let it, let it turn into soap on the, on the, the dishes. And then when I clean them, they're gonna clean themselves because they're soap, I mean rather than having all these oily dishes to contend with that I have to wash twice, you know? So that's my plan. Anyway, so here we go. We're gonna do our next layer. I've mixed in my fragrance. I've gotten this lightened. I've stick blended it to a light trace. I think I got most of the TD mixed in. It's looking a little swirly, but you know, I don't kind of care. That could kind of go cool. The trick is here, I'm gonna try not to break through this layer. I've never been able to successfully get myself even layers, straight layers. I've always ended up with textured layers that I did on purpose, or I've done, <laughs> there was the time I was trying to do pointy layers and got um, a drop swirl, the time I was trying to do a drop swirl and got pointy layers, the time, no, that was the time I was trying to do straight layers and got pointy layers. So like I said, I'm learning happy accidents. I don't care, take the Bob Ross method. You know, ha we don't make mistakes, we have happy little accidents. And I haven't had a soap turn out yet that I hated, so. Oh, I'm gonna get a little swirl of the mica in there. I see that. All right, so here's my last bit. I'm gonna go ahead and, um, actually, I'm just gonna leave this in my big pitcher. 
I'm gonna go ahead and plump that in there. So let's get a little bit more TD. I'm gonna wipe my hands off so I can get a little more TD mixed. So I do this, I do it, I disperse my TD. I do a um, tablespoon of water to a teaspoon of TD and kind of handle it that way. Um, I haven't really, I think I'm gonna go ahead and mix up just two tablespoons of water and two teaspoons of TD, just to make sure. We're gonna do, what did I say, two teaspoons? So I'm gonna do two more teaspoons of TD. Got so many lumps in here, but nice thing about Mad Mica's titanium dioxide, this stuff, man, it just disperses like a dream. I love it. And I know some people are bigger on other brands. I just, I don't know, this one just does it for me. So again, I'm an inexperienced soaper, but I like the way this one works. It disperses really quick. Don't have to do a lot of work with it. I literally put it in this little guy. I bought a pack of like 20 of these or something at the dollar store. And uh, you know, it just mixes right up. There's like nothing left behind. So that's why I use it. <clears throat> and I'm gonna go ahead and just pour that in until I get this lighter than my last layer. <laughs> see how well this is doing oh no that's lighter oh my gosh look at that all right well there we go we'll just put our fragrance in and go to town I don't even need to stick blend this layer like I'm super happy about that these little sample jars kind of tick me off because I'll always end up with a couple drops in them but what I'll do is I'll set them upside down and let them sit for a couple days and then I'll use that I'll put a couple drops in my wax melts and my wax warmers on wax that's really not got much of a scent left and uh kind of give myself a little scent boost in the house. So let's get this dude all mixed up, poured in, and then I can show you the fun little mold um, thing that my husband made for me because he's amazing. Uh, super supportive of me starting this soap business. Told him my goal is to do it so that um, he doesn't have to work a full-time job. So. Ultimately, that's the goal, guys. We're trying to get a business going. And uh, it's funny because he's kind of interested in the soap making stuff. Like, you think he thinks the science of it's interesting. Um, but, and he's got such experience with, like, retail. His, his job is, he's been in, um, either in, like, the front-facing end of retail or the back end doing, like, IT systems and stuff. And you know, he just knows the business. And so I started talking to him about like, well, what do I need to do to get going? And we were talking about P&L and, you know, just all this stuff. And, you know, it occurred to me like how grateful I am to have somebody who supports my passions, but also kind of does it in a way that's helpful and not just, uh, you know, yeah, 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 my wife's cute and all, she likes to make soap, but he's like super supportive of the things that I like to do and the things that interest me. So now I don't do a lot of decorative tops. I know some of you are gonna be like, why don't you do something pretty? Um, to be honest, I <laughs> it's just one more thing I don't wanna contend with. And um, for me, I just really like a plain top. And so I, I tend to plane my tops off when I'm done also. So not only, do I have a plain top to start with? Because I tend to get soda ash, which is really bizarre because I water discount, but I think it's probably because I live in Florida. I have a really humid environment. So I get soda ash, I want that off. Steaming it off for me just hasn't worked very well. So I just go ahead and instead of dealing with the soda ash, I'm trying to figure out how to get rid of it. I've tried sea popping, I've tried everything. I just decided, you know what? I'm gonna plane that off. I'm gonna have a nice, clean, neat, soap and be done with it. So here's this little frame, because the thing about this Bramble Very Mold, I know people have talked about um, the uh, tall and skinny mold bowing out, but I fill that, I don't know if it's because I fill it so full or what. I mean, I'm using the amount that Brambleberry had on their website, but uh, it just will bow out for me just enough that it aggravates me, because I like, like a nice clean rectangle. So anyway, all I did was have my husband build this out of some scrap wood that we had, and now I've got a great frame for it. So that is 
my peach layered soap and I will come back and share with you the cut in about 24 hours. All right, so I have unmolded my soap from yesterday. Still a little soft on the edges, I'll have to be careful, but it's gorgeous, smells good, looks good, and I am going to cut this bad boy. Good Lord, getting it lined up, literally the hardest part. Look at that, I got straight layers, I got them. They're so gorgeous, look at that. So excited. I don't know why I'm singing, but I am excited about this. It turned out beautifully. I've got these nice even layers. Hope I got them all the way through. Doing little one inch cuts on these. Oh, I just got a partial gel on that. And a little bit of glycerin rivers going on as I got more uh, uh, titanium dioxide in there, but still looks pretty darn good. Um, I realized yesterday as I was looking at my footage that I shot that I forgot to turn on my light. So my footage was all really yellow. I'm gonna have to fix that when I edit, but, um, but I got everything recorded. So what are you gonna do, you know? So hopefully this footage looks a little better today. Oh, see, I told you that was soft. I just took a big old gouge out of the side of that. I'm so impatient about unmolding. Like I probably could have waited another couple hours after I unmolded it just to get it the chance to harden up on the outside. I didn't do that. So here we are just <laughs> cutting a soap that probably could have sat a little bit longer, but I'm wearing gloves, no fingerprints. We'll be okay. Oh yeah, look at those glycerin rivers from all that extra TD I put in there. All that titanium dioxide gave me some intense looking glycerin rivers. I don't know, I mean, I said earlier, I don't mind glycerin rivers, they don't bother me, but I think in this particular soap, would have looked a little better if it didn't have them. But again, it's not a big deal. Soap still smells good, still clean you. And considering I was trying out um, a technique that I had not been able to do because of my lack of patience, a fragrance that I had never used before, and that I um, kind of did it on the fly, you know, I can't be, I can't be too upset about the way it turned out. I know it's like, when you go into something without a plan, oh my goodness. So I've got like partial gel and I've got glycerin rivers. You know, when you, when you don't go into, when you go into something without a plan and it turns out pretty well, I'd say that's a win. I uh, thought I might actually get 10 full bars out of this. I did not, I have one extra large sample. Oh, see, that looks great right there. Look at that. The whole thing would look like that. It would have been perfect. I mean, just, that's gorgeous. Ah, and see over there, I got my glycerin rivers. Oh, well, at least that side will be the one I photograph few little bubbles, maybe some steric spots, but hey, pretty good. Now remember I was saying about soda ash, you can kind of see that there. If you look at, actually, let me show you on this bar. So you see that, you see that there. And then if you look at the top, it's just that much lighter. I may not have to, what I normally would do here, and I'll show you on this sample piece, is I would just take my cutter, and take a little tiny bit off the top, just enough. This actually gives me little samples that I don't mind giving away. And then you have a nice, neat, straight top with no soda ash. So that's how I normally do it, but that's it. That's the cut. I'll let that sit probably till tomorrow and then I'll trim it up, make it look pretty, photograph it, and then put it on the rack to cure. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking it, commenting, or subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching.